All right, you may have noticed that in our presentation, I was showing you a variety of different functions that are available to arrays. But when we did our one-dimensional and two-dimensional and character arrays, we never used any of these functions, but when we created our vectors, we did. I showed you on here that there are many of the similar functions that are available to vectors as there are to arrays, and you say, why didn't we use any of these functions when we were designing our vectors? If we want to use those functions, we're actually going to have to declare our arrays as similar to vectors, as objects. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use a wrapper class to wrap an array to make it an object so that we can use those same kind of functions that are available to our vectors with our arrays. So we're going to write a very simple program to show you how to use the array wrapper class so that our arrays become class objects and therefore we can use all the class functions that are available to them. To gain access to all the functions that are available to vectors, we have to pound include vector, right? So to get access to all of the functions that are available to an array object, we're going to have to pound include <coughs> array. So let's see if we can just com compare, say, original arrays, vectors, and array objects. So how about if we declare some values? We'll declare some variables. So the first one that we're going to do is let's declare just a regular old array, just in case you forgot. So we're going to create an int array. I'll even call it int array. Um, we'll give it 15 elements. So I have to declare um, the number of elements either implicitly or explicitly at the time that it is created. So how about if we declare a vector? So we're going to use the vector keyword, and inside of the parentheses, we're going to tell it, or excuse me, inside of the chevrons, we're going to tell it that's an enter, an ent, and I'll call it my vector. We're going to give it a name. So how about if we declare an array object? If I could spell it right. Well, just like the vector, I'm going to use the array keyword. I'm going to use the chevrons to tell it how many there are. But if you remember, arrays have to have um, the number of elements. So we're going to create it as 15. Um, vectors are by nature dynamic in size. They can grow and they can shrink. Arrays do not. They cannot even array objects. And then I'm going to give it a name. I'll call it my array object. If I can spell. All right, so now we have declared a variety of different um, data types, uh, regular arrays, vectors, and array objects. So the next thing that we might want to do is, how about if we assign some values? So let me scroll up, and how about if we assign some values to an array? Well, we already know how to do that. We're going to use a for loop. So I am going to assign to this ent array um, the remainder of our count mod 5. So hopefully it'll go 0 through 4. We'll see that. Then let's, ass um, let's assign some values. This is our array. Um, how about if we assign values to our vector? If we just saw in the last video that I say uh, my vector dot, and then we use the assign, right? And inside of here, I'm going to give it two parameters. The first one is how many I want. There'll be 15 of them. And we'll just create a vector with 15 elements. And the second one is going to be what I want it assigned to or initialized to or the values that I want given. Since it's an int array, I'm just going to set them all to 102. So how about if we assign the array object? To assign values to an array object, we're going to use the same kind of for loop. So if you don't mind, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to steal this for loop since it's already there. I'll paste it down here. But now what I'm going to put inside of this for loop is I'm going to put my array object. And then <clears throat> we're going to use the dot at count. So what are my counter variable is, I'm going to see if I can do count mod um, how about if we do count mod 6, see if we can get something slightly different. So we'll do a count mod 6. 
All right, we can't tell if any of this is working until we print them out. So maybe the next thing that we should probably do is display the values. And we'll see how we display the values between the three different data types. So if we're going to display the values on a traditional array, we're going to use our for loop. Let me see if my for loop, ah, oh, there it is. It's still on my clipboard. So my for loop, um, we called it interray. So we're just going to see out uh, my interray, which is int array. And then we will use <coughs> um, the square brackets. We'll display out whatever is in there. And then we will force a tab between each one of them. And then I am going to, uh, we'll see out a couple of new lines before we get to the next one. I'm going to run it and see if we are actually getting the values in my int array. All right, there we go. Zero through four because I did a mod five when I was initializing it. So now let's see how I would display the values of our vector. So our vector, vector is also going to use a for loop. So I'm going to just copy, since I still have that on there, except instead of saying count um, less than 15, we know that there's a size function that allows me to determine the size of a, or a vector. So I'm going to say my vector.size. <clears throat> and then in here, all I'm going to do is see out. And then we will say my vector <clears throat> dot or excuse me, yeah, at, and then our count. And then we will also put some tabs between those. And we'll run it and see if now we can get our vector. Well, as a matter of fact, uh, we're going to force a couple of new lines, but I still have my for loop on my um, clipboard. So we'll put that here. All right, let's see if we can get the traditional array and then the vectors. So we filled the vectors. We assigned a 102 to every one of the elements in a vector. All right, very good. So the last one was our array object. Um, I still have my for loop on the clipboard, which means now I'm free to come over here and steal that, um, force in a couple of new lines. I'll put it down here um, right after I printed out my vector. But this time, instead of hard coding it to 15, because it is an object, an array object of the array class, I can say my array object dot size. So now I have access to the function that was available to the vector because I have um, wrapped it in a wrapper class. So we will do my array object. <coughs> dot at count and then we will also force a tab inside of there and now I'm pretty sure that I still have that see out on my clipboard so let's run it this one last time and see if we are now actually um, getting what we're hoping to get so here we go we have our traditional array, we have our vector, and then we have our object array using object methods or functions that are available to it because it is a object of the array class. So there's one last thing that I want you to remember because we've been using the dot at, and I see that we also have these bracket um, operators so I'm just going to copy and paste this in because what I would like you to do is to remember some very, very important things. So let me tab these over. And so if you remember in the conversation that we had during our presentation is that if our in value is out of a or is out of range, for instance, when we were doing our hotel and our motel, and um, we were kind of constraining them to um, one through six or zero through five or something like that. We were constraining them, right? Manually. I want you to remember that the bracket objects, both for vector and arrays, 
either array objects or traditional arrays does not throw exceptions, which means that with exception handling, I'm still going to have to say if the index that you're trying to access is outside of the range, I can actually throw my own exception because um, the system will not throw an exception. But if I use the dot at, both the vectors and the array dot at will throw exceptions and it'll throw an out of range exception that I can then catch. So this is how you can use array objects that give you access to all of those methods that we were listing under our presentation for both arrays and for vectors. So our video lab for section five is going to be <clears throat> to read in or prompt the user for a variety of different prices for Amazon Prime Day. Did we already miss that? Um, you're gonna read in a variety of prices, at least five, and then ultimately you're gonna tell them what the total is of all the prices, the cheapest one that they chose, and then the position of the cheapest one. Um, you can use vectors, you can use arrays, either one of them are acceptable. I would like there to be a friendly greeting and a graceful close. And I want you to do a display back all of the relevant information. Don't just slam a number onto the screen or put a tiny little header explaining it. You need to mirror back all the relevant information. And speaking of a header, um, your program should include header information with your name and a brief description of the program. Remember, the name of a program is not a description. I also want you to include inline comments. That must be spelled wrong. Inline comments in the form of pseudocode as you're mapping out your plan. And then finally, test cases. No walkthrough videos are required in your video labs. 